Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at the Fixer class. The Fixer excels as a support class and has some really great group utility. And the best part is that you can get some variety out of the class due to the two different equipment options at your disposal, so we'll be going over both of those today and the best ways to use them. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm currently trying to hit a thousand subscribers, which will really help out the channel. And thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far. With that said, let's get into it. The Fixer class can really elevate the group it's in, and is a lot of fun for people who like playing the support role. When it comes to the Fixer skill tree, you can choose to either use mask and grenades or explosive ammo crates for your equipment and build a class around whichever you choose. While I think both are viable on extreme, and you'll be able to progress through the game as either, I do feel like the explosive ammo route is the best way to go, especially if you're playing with a group of friends or a pre-made team. When you are playing in matchmade groups, explosive ammo is still great, but having mask and grenades to get out of ridiculous situations is really helpful. But if you are playing with friends, you should not have constant mini hordes spawning, so the explosive ammo will provide a greater buff for your team. So I'm going to do this video a little differently than the others. Since the builds are so different from each other, first we'll go over the explosive ammo builds and then the mask and grenade build. When it comes to prestige talents, the fixtures are on the weaker side, however, they do still provide bonuses, so they are nice to have. Once you hit Prestige 4, you will gain a 10% chance of using a Breaching Charge without spending it, your Revive Speed will be increased by 25%, increase Carried Ammo Capacity for Primary and Secondary Weapons by 5% for you and your teammates, and deal 10% more damage to Special Zombies. As far as the free Breaching Charge goes, I literally did not have it proc one single time while testing, although I have had it work in the past. It is a fairly low chance to proc, but I would still prioritize leaving Breaching Charges for the Fixer on your team just in case. Okay, for starters, let's go into the Explosive Ammo build. Explosive Ammo is a big DPS boost for your entire team, and will cause almost all weapons to rip through bulls and infectors, which is very helpful on extreme difficulty. The best part is when you place your supply bag down, it refills your magazine, so if you're using a weapon with a long reload timer like the LMG, it can be very beneficial. And the first talent choice is actually one of the pillars of the build, Armory. This makes using a supply bag give a 20% chance to restore one equipment charge, but the bag owner can only restore their equipment when someone else gains the benefit from the bag. This is an incredible perk, and during hordes, as long as your teammates are using your supply bags, it will cause you to generate an almost unlimited amount of additional supply bags. You can place them in key areas so teammates can constantly refill their ammo supply and always have an increased DPS output. This also allows your teammates to be able to generate more equipment charges for themselves, which will boost everyone's survivability and DPS. Next up is Give Him Hell, which makes reviving your teammate grant explosive ammo for both of you. Basically, this is a free reload for both you and your revived teammate, and is really the only option in the tier anyways. Up next is Paramedic, which increases revive speed by 100%. This paired with a Prestige 2 perk makes reviving a downed teammate essentially instant. Cloakroom is also a very strong choice as well, but the instant revive proved to be more valuable more often. After that, like always, is weak grass as zombies hit extremely hard on extreme difficulty and the extra health is very much needed. However, on lower difficulties, my round 1 can be used. Next up is Pickpocket, which makes killing 15 zombies in rapid succession refill one equipment charge. This alongside armory will make you constantly generate more equipment charges, so make sure to always be placing supply bags during hordes. Instant Replay is next, which increases the amount of ammo restored when someone uses your supply bag. This will really help out certain classes and builds as they can be extremely ammo hungry and will ensure you and your team will never run out of ammo. Next tier, I generally go with Power Shot, which increases all semi-autic rifles' penetration. I typically use automatic weapons still though because using semi-automatics can be actually painful on my hand, having to constantly click my mouse, although they can be very powerful. Next up is 4th of July, which allows your supply bag to be used one more time before depleting. This will allow your teammates additional chances to generate an equipment charge for both you and them. And for the final tier, I personally go with Bandolier, which improves all defensive kits by 25% and can be extremely helpful during hordes. The other options in this tier are also good, but Bandolier will generally generate more kills during hordes, even if it won't always reflect in your personal kill count. While the Big 5-0 was bugged when I tried it out on the Dromaster, it did work for me here when I was testing it out for those interested in that perk. Okay, with that build out of the way, let's go into the Mask and Grenade build. There will be certain levels that this build will shine, like the gauntlet part of level 1-2 and the part in 4-2 where you have to plant explosives. When you're playing as a Mask and Grenade fixer, your team should allow you to pick up equipment bags as Mask and Grenades will allow you to escape from a bad situation. First up is Stand By Me, which increases firearm damage by 100% for 10 seconds when reviving or unpinning a teammate. 
This is the only choice in this tier for mass grenades, and it's a great DPS boost when you do have to revive someone. Next up is Night Owl, which makes mass grenades grant an additional temporary health boost. This will allow you to take a few extra hits once the masking effect wears off if you are still in an undesirable situation, and I rarely found the side effect perk to be useful. Next up, again go with Paramedic and then Wheatgrass like in the previous build. Combining Paramedic with Masking Grenades allows you to easily slip in and revive someone, or if you are out of grenades, the instant timer will allow you to quickly slip in and revive a downed teammate. After that, go with One for the Road since equipment bags should be prioritized to you. This will increase the amount of Masking Grenades by one allowing you to carry two at a time. This proved to be very valuable when things broke down and allowed my groups to get out of desperate situations most of the time. Next up is Under the Table, which restores 10% of primary weapon ammo to anyone who enters your Masking Grenade Cloud. Since you should be using Masking Grenades fairly frequently, this will restore some ammo when using them. For the next perk, again go with Power Shot, as the increased penetration will increase your DPS if you do use semi-automatic rifles. After that is Shadow Walker, which will increase the Masking Grenade effect by 2 seconds. Since the one for the road perk nerfs your Masking Grenade duration, this will increase it enough so you'll have enough time masked to get out of a bad situation and reposition yourself. And for the last tier, again I go with Bandolier to buff all of my team's defensive kits. The only real issue with the Masking Grenade Fixer was that when I was paired with a good group, I almost had no need of the Masked Grenades as everything generally went smoothly. And without the Explosive Ammo, the Fixer has basically no DPS boosting talents, so the Explosive Ammo is generally the best way to go. The only thing is that you are fairly fragile as the Fixer really does not have many defensive talents. So if you have a Drone Master in your group, I would highly recommend placing their second drone on you to give you a defensive boost and increase survivability. But both builds can be fun and you can switch between the two depending on the level you're playing to mix things up. And having that variety can make the Fixer a fun class to main as well. When it comes to weapons, semi-automatics are probably best, but they make me feel like I'm going to get carpal tunnel from using them, so I usually just stick to automatic weapons. And for melee, I've still been using the hatchet because of the temporary health boost. So we just have two classes left, the Gunmaster and Vanguard, and we'll have gone through all of the classes. I've also been playing a lot of Back for Blood, so I should have my review out shortly as well. Thank you so much for watching, see you all in the next video.